Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm joined by Alex Hutchinson. He is an uh, amazing photographer, uh, Instagram sensation. <laughs> Today we are doing a challenge, it's going to be um, Alex shooting on his um, analog equipment so um, he has a medium format camera and a little uh, Nikon camera and I'm going to be shooting on my Canon so we'll see how it goes, it's brand against brand as well. Let so hey guys, today I'm shooting on Pentax 67 and I'm going to start with black and white Tri-X 400. Our amazing stylist Carmel today, she brought a number of different pieces that uh, myself and Anita get to pick from. And I'm going to simplify the first look anyway, so we're going to go with this tweed because I'm shooting black and white, this will look great, especially with these black pants. I'm probably do open white shirt underneath. Okay, so we're ready for our first look. I've got uh, Pentax ready with the Tri-X 400 in it. This is the 105 lens f2.4 so once our model is ready i'm going to get a light test off my digital and i'm also going to get a light test off my light meter because film is so expensive i just want to make sure i'm getting the right reading so i'll use this first get a couple of tests and then we'll move on to the medium format basically i'm just getting a light reading off the skin tone in the front that's going to be balanced properly which for me, I always find the digital is slightly overexposed. Looking straight out the window. So I've set it all in here. Take a reading off there. Take a reading off here. Take a reading off the white. So it's around F2, the 250. So I'll have to push to 200. I do have a light meter built into this Pentax as well. So I'm basically reading light three times before I even take one frame. So I'm going to be shooting at 1 25th of a second and because this camera is so heavy I have to put it on a tripod. You'll hear the shutter when I click it off. That shutter is just slaps open and closed and if you shoot anywhere around 1 25th or 60th of a second you get a camera shake. The reason I'm kind of changing everything now in terms of the code and the styling and everything is because I can't tweak it later in Photoshop and so I want everything to be perfect inside the lens. So when I do get it onto the computer, all I have to do is tweak contrast. Okay, you ready? Softer with the eyes, a little bit more vacant. So if you're looking through the lens, see if you can see yourself. Really soft. Three, two, one. It's one take. Basically, if I feel like I've got the shot, then I'll only take about four or five. That's why we're just much slower than you normally would be on digital. So because we're shooting 120 at 6-7 frame, I get 10 shots out of each roll of film. Here we have six frames in. I'm quite happy with the last two frames, so I think they're the ones that I'm going to use for, uh, for this comparison. You can see it goes from this, the original spool that I loaded. All the film is now on that spool that I put over this side. So now once I take this out, I get to stick it back down and send this off to my uh, developer. This single roll of film is about eight euro. So I'm gonna send it off to the developers and I'll have it back in about four days and they're gonna scan it for me as well. So I am going to be shooting Alex's look now. Um, I am going to be using my 100 uh, mil macro lens um, and I'm going to be shooting on my um, 5D Mac 4. Uh, we are going to keep the setup kind of the same because you know the whole point is to compare uh, what I shoot on the Canon to what he was shooting on the Pentax. You can see that type of frame that I was going for. Okay, so it's basically just kind of cropped just below or above the button. There. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And then so really I'll, the I'll keep it relatively the same as well. Um, I'm going to be shooting on my lowest um, F, which is 2.8. Uh, I'm going to see the setups. I obviously I'm not using a light meter. Um, I never do. I always just like take a photo of what I think it is, and then I just kind of tweak it around. So I think the main, obviously the main um, difference here between us is the fact that I can take as many images as I need, and I can basically look in the viewer and see the photo. It does make your life much much easier. Um, kind of being able to do that um, and just kind of seeing your results straight away. In a way, I feel like film kind of slows you down nicely um, rather than just you know shooting and shooting and shooting. And I do get caught up with like shooting so many frames sometimes. And I go home and I have to look through like thousands of photos, and it's just it's just a pain. So 
Okay, so um, we're moving on to my look. Uh, we are going to be shooting um, kind of here by the window. I put Claire um, in this outfit because I kind of like the, the frilliness of the, of the sleeves. I think it just gives it extra something. I love layers, so I put an extra coat on top of it. Um, I put this little black board in here um, so we get a bit of shadows on her face, but the light is kind of still directly on her face, so we get those kind of uh, nice shadows on one side so it's kind of almost like a like a studio like kind of setup so usually because i'm shooting um on the digital i can tweak stuff later in post-production signing but if i have to um so i prefer to sometimes go for a bit of a darker image because it's easier to lighten it rather than having a, an image that is too light and trying to darken it afterwards so um it's especially kind of handy when you don't have that much natural light available and so on um, because this way kind of gives me more um, more room to play with um, and I can change my ISO and so on so I took 72 photos already um, between the previous look and this look so I probably take <laughs> oh yeah so I have my 134 Ooh. images 134 that would cost me about 134 quid so I saw what Anita was doing and I'm going for a slightly more delicate style pose and I'm going to brighten out the image rather than using the black I'm going to swing this around to the white I'm not really looking for much shadow and highlight across the side of the face I checked it previously so I'm, I'm 250, 2.8 and it's like as I was set to 400 because it's portrait 400 in colour so this has a light meter built into it, so I'm reading it as I'm shooting, but I'm actually shooting slightly underexposed by not even a full stop, it's like an eighth of a stop. So because I already had this film preloaded, there's normally 36 frames on Portrait 400, but I had already taken 21, so I've taken seven shots. And we're nearly finished. I don't like that film. I suppose it's because I'm never sure if I've got the shot or not. There's no 90% of the time we do end up getting something that you love, but there's always that scary moment that you just need to fucking share. There you go, that's the end of the roll. Just sad. Jeez. So now I just press these two buttons. And we'll wind that roll of film. Okay, so we are going to have one last look and it's like a bit of a twist. I covered the back of my camera so I won't be able to see the results. Um, I am also going to be um, using uh, manual focus, so I'll have to be focusing on my own basically. And I'm going to give myself 10 shots as well to work with, so kind of basically imitate the, the analog um, situation that Alex was in. Uh, I'm excited to see how slow you actually shoot, or if you just yeah. hold it on, you know, yeah. hold your book. So yeah, so basically I have a little, um, a little. Um, I'm not going to be using um, the light meter or anything, I have a little light meter in my camera, so I'm just going to go according to whatever Canon thinks is the perfect exposure, I guess. So I'll just look through the screen, it's going to show me where the exposure is kind of in the middle. And that's what I'm going to go by, basically. So with this look, I'm going to start uh, with my 50 mil. I'm going to take photos of both 50 and 100 mil. I'm just going to kind of play around with them. Um, for this one, she's on the blackboard. So she has one blackboard behind her and one on the side of her. It's kind of exactly the same idea with the previous one. You get the nice little shadows on the face. And I'm going to be shooting kind of, I'm going to be standing here to kind of have the light a bit more direct on her face. I obviously can't see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to check what the perfect exposure is and then maybe shoot a bit brighter just to be safe. So, I know. Very risky. <laughs> I love so, this. Yeah. Oh, I forgot I have manual focus as well. I need to focus. I was like, why is it out of focus? Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go quite close. Okay, so one, two, three. And I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> this is so sucky. Okay, um, now I have no idea how they look, obviously. Um, so I'm going to take another one. Yeah, just like that, and a tiny bit more too. It's, it's very stressful. I just find, like, in general, when I shoot for clients, I always take way too many photos because I'm just kind of like, I prefer to be safe than sorry. And here I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what the exposure is like. So, well, what Canon tells me is that the exposure is ideal, but I can't really see, so I don't, I don't really know. Um, 
and then obviously um, I don't even know if I sharpened this properly because it's on all manual. So, so this is my fourth shot now. So, uh, okay. Um, yeah. Again, I have no idea what I just took. Next year, so I don't deal with two on the one. We can make a calculation now. So two point eight. Two point eight. Yeah. Put it on here. It's F two. Two point eight, and then on your it's two point eight. So the light meter is telling me to use um, the camera on two point eight with ISO on uh, six hundred and forty, and then one sixtieth of a second, or what? Well, two hundred of a second. And what does your camera tell you? So my Canon is telling me that this is uh, one stop too bright, but I will try it and see how it works. That's Still softer shots, okay? So we've got they're quite delicate portraits. I'm going to get the hands up towards your collar. I just. Mess the mic. I'm just taking a reading of light off the light meter that's built into it. So I'm going to shoot this slightly underexposed rather than over. Another part, um, I have five images left, so um, I put Claire against the window. So I'm going to shoot backlit. I'm going to put a reflector in front of her, so kind of some of the light reflects back. And then I'm going to take a few shots, or well, get five shots. I'm just going to run a little bit closer um, and reflect the light. Um, I'm just going to stick to the 100 mil um, and see. So I might have to put a bit down. I'm just trying to shoot so. Now I'm just trying to kind of think of what's the. Okay, so now it's showing me that I'm underexposing. So I'm going to go down or back up to ISO 640. But basically, I just want to make sure that her her face is lit in properly because we have so much backlight that I don't want it to be too dark or too bright. Yes. Alex is too Sorry. Sure. Okay, I'm going to go for a lower F. I'm going to go on F2.0, so obviously I have to be careful with the um, sharpness. But that's kind of going to give me a bit more wiggle room in terms of Have you already of taken lightness. a photo? I took one photo with the um, 100 mil. Change your pose a bit. Um, why are you changing the pose? Because I only have three photos left <laughs> and I want to have some variety. Okay, um, and now if I can get the reading from uh, the meter. That's me. To kind of see. Meter man. 2.0. Oh. Okay. 2.8 at the back. 1.4 in the front. Try one last photo with 1.8 instead of 2.2, just to kind of see. So ISO 200, um, um, shutter speed 200 and 1.8. Okay, and then I'll just check that. 2.8, 2.8. What was it back there? 0.4.0. <laughs> <laughs> Second. I'm going to blow out the background a little bit. Thank I'm going to go 5.6. I kind of want a slightly darker image anyway. Beautiful. Boom. That's the last shot. So, how did you find the experience? That was interesting. Uh, I loved the challenge that we had. Um, I do love shooting on, on film, but of course, not being able to see the images on the back and just makes you slightly nervous. Yeah, right? it does. So these are the issues that you have when you're shooting for a client and the budgets aren't exactly massive. And if you do end up shooting film, you do get a little bit nervous because you're waiting five or six days to make sure that you have the shot that the client's looking for. But um, so I feel especially nowadays, like I think a lot of clients want to see the images straight on the back of the camera or on the laptop, you know, they want to kind of have instant effects and see if stuff yeah. works and so on. Plus, as, I said, as you said, not knowing, like, I mean, the last part of the challenge where I didn't know what I was doing. First, I was really careful about the shots I was taking because I only had 10 of them. That's true. And it just made me so aware of everything, which is great because it kind of, it, it puts you back out of your like usual comfort zone and it kind of makes you think more about the shots. That's so, it. It slows the whole process down. Yeah. So you start to, to think more about the image that you're actually taking rather than taking 55 and throwing like you know, 49 away <laughs> but it, 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 yeah. it lets you concentrate and know that you're, you're going to get this one image yeah. that is going to stand out and, and you don't have to take the 55 images so yeah. I really do enjoy shooting film and this is why I go out all the time and I shoot, I shoot film as much as I possibly can just to slow myself down so that when I do shoot digital I don't end up running a camera up in the two three thousand photographs per shoot 
because then it just it increases yeah. your time of editing and, it does, yeah. and everything else. So you, you just know the frame and you're concentrating so much more and then you just get what you, what you feel is right for, yeah. a, for that day, and for that no. mood anyway. It's a, it's, a, it's a very good experience, I have to say. Like, obviously the downsides would be the costs of running a... That is a huge downside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said that you spent, what, 80 euro on the robot? Yeah, 80, 85, I think it was 85 euro for 10 rolls of film. So yeah. that's, uh, that will eat yeah. into budgets. Yeah. Especially, well, if you have, if you set a budget aside and say, I'm only going to shoot 10 rolls of film today, then you're absolutely fine. Yeah. But, it, it, you know, that cost doesn't include your uh, development and scanning and, and all the amount of time that you spend afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, but I would suggest every photographer shoots as much film as they can, yeah. just to slow down the process. I have to say, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm intrigued, I'm not really like big into analog because I think it kind of scares me a bit. Um, because obviously, as you see, I shoot quite a lot. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shoot quite a lot of photos. Um, but yeah, I agree, um, it definitely does slow you down, makes, makes you think more about what you're doing rather than just like, you know, aiming your camera and shooting and hoping for the best. Yeah, I really enjoyed today. Yeah. It was really good fun. Okay guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think about the images. Let me know, you know, what you think about the comparison between the analog and digital. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.